Hello, hello. There's been quite a lot of progress on the DIY server, more than enough that I'd want to showcase it uh, to you. So since the latest uh, video, there's been a big amount of things that have been uh, changed on this uh, setup, and I'd like to uh, walk you through them and show you uh, what's been added. The most obvious difference has been these glass doors uh, that are closable with uh, latches. And the idea here is very simply to keep the dust out and the noise in, or at least as much as I can with the noise. I have also added an air intake at the bottom and an air output just here. The flap is just to prevent the um, dust from going back in when the server is not in use. The dust filter is for car compartments. It's rated to stop pollen. So in theory, it should um, block the fine particulate and fine dust, which has been plaguing my computers for quite some time here. And lastly, I have added some broom holders, which I've modified as I figured they are really, really good at uh, cable management. It allows me to pop the cables out and then put them back in with great ease. Lastly, just to show it to you working, or at least showing you the fan in action. It's just noisy enough that I wouldn't be comfortable having it in my room. So still room for improvement uh, just here. That said, the airflow is crazy. It's got a huge air output, more than enough to cool all the computers. Still needs to be tested to make sure of that, but it's very, very promising. What's not going to be shown in this video is anything that's software related. I have yet to install any operating systems. I have yet to truly stress test the computers. So that is going to be in the next video. Okay. Let me show you how I built this. The assembly of the doors was a little bit confusing, but it was quite straightforward. I very simply started by assembling the doors themselves, removing all of the computer trays, dusting everything, putting in the doors, screwing those in tight. And once that was done, I added a few latch systems that I got from the local DIY store. And the intention with those is to have positive pressure inside of the server rack to keep the dust out, even if there were to be a little few gaps here and there. To allow the power strip cable to go through, I found a hole at the bottom of the DIY rack server. I will be doing another hole for Ethernet cables, but that's not in this video. To make sure I wasn't doing any mistakes, I did a test sound. So what you see here is just a regular old fan. There are no noise cancellation or filters, so it's going to be a bit noisy. The next noise comparison is the fan as if I was next to it with no glass uh, separating me from it. This here represents the most ideal case. I don't have access to it because I have a hole for the filter, which I'm going to be doing later in the video. But this represents the minimum amount of sound I can achieve. And it is very tolerable. For the dust part, I came up with this. Dust being one of the main reasons why I'm building this enclosed DIY server. What you're looking at here is a car filter, for car compartment filter, which is presumably off-brand and made for Toyota cars. It is rated for pollen and viruses, if I recall correctly, and should allow me to filter all of the dust that has been causing me trouble. I designed the 3D um, support and the tolerances are so tight I need a knife to push it into the, the corners. And this, in turn, allows the fan to sit on the other side here and pull the air through the dust filter. 
so far it has worked well. I do have sound issues still, so room for improvement, but that's going to be in another video. Now, if the door assembly went quite well, the drilling of the holes for the air in and out was the exact opposite. Everything went wrong. For starters, I bought a 120mm saw hole, specifically the size of the fan, but I've got no experience using those and it shows. I'm certain you've all heard about the expression measure twice, cut once. Well, I did measure once, cut once, then measure again, cut another time, realize that didn't work again. I mean, why spend two minutes measuring and cutting correctly when you can spend 20 plus minutes fixing a very preventable mistake? I was very confident that the measurements for the second hole were correct, so I started drilling away, only to realize that I had in fact started drilling into the screw holding the foot of the DIY server. I then had the very dubious pleasure of spending an extra 20 minutes fixing my very preventable mistake in the first place using hot glue and a whole lot of swearing. To my great dismay, the inspector of the house chose precisely this moment to come and inspect my work, so I had to intercept him quickly and bribe him as to prevent him from looking too closely as to the mess that was unfolding right next to him. Thankfully, he was very keen at accepting all of those bribes and I was able to send him on his merry way, thus ensuring that I could finish all of my mess in peace. The fan was not easy to put in. I had to take quite a few takes before it fit in exactly in front of the hole that I had drilled. The fan that I'm using is meant for Bitcoin mining rigs and the likes of them. So it's got a very, very high displacement of air, but it does come at the cost of a very high level of noise. The fans use 12 volts, so I plug them onto an adapter, which goes into a power strip. The power strip will also be used by the rest of the appliances. That's what you see me install down there. I was quite concerned that the fan would not be able to pull enough air through the filter, so I gave it a simple test using a sheet of A3 paper and measuring roughly how much airflow is going through. The direct output of the fan is giving me enough confidence to then try it again with the door closed, which in turn also gives me enough confidence to give it a try. So. I'm fairly confident enough that yes, the airflow is sufficient to core all of the computers inside. So I proceed with the build in order to be able to give it a try. Cable management has always been a plague when it comes to my computer builds and I had an epiphany when I saw the broom holders that were being used in the kitchen. So. As the name implies, normally a broom holder is to hold a broom, but if you remove the plastic stopper and you squeeze them shut, they can in fact be used for cable management and be very pleasant to use uh, for that purpose. I bought six as a starting point just to evaluate if they could work as well as hoping to. Screwing in all of those cable holders required a little bit more effort and swearing than I'd like to admit to, but I was able to use the holes that IKEA pre-drilled in this piece of furniture. Once the cable holders were installed, I got out a few of my spare cables, a very old switch that I've had lying around for quite some time, and gave it a test installation to see how everything fits together. So here is a look at the cable holders, the previously named broom holders. And as you can see, squeezed shut, they can hold even ethernet cables with relative ease, and it allows for very easy access and maintenance while also keeping the cables in place. Obviously, since the power cables are a little bit bigger, they're held even more firmly in place. Should the cables not be held in place as much as I want, I can always squeeze this more, and in which case it's going to become even better. 
I'll probably be adding a few more. I already bought six more, uh, just to ensure that the cables have got even less freedom here and there and have better cable management down there. That said, it is already extremely satisfying. In a bid to reduce the sound of the server even more, I noticed a small gap right behind the doors even when they were closed and decided to add a very small rubber insulation. And although it won't make any difference with the dust, it should allow a small reduction in the sound as no more sound will escape through the side. And last but not least, I put a very simple dust filter on the air output in order to ensure that the dust doesn't go back in when the server is not in use and the fan is off. It's not good enough to prevent dust from going in on an input, but it's good enough on an output. The fan is more than powerful enough to just push it aside when it is on. On the very long term, the intent is to have a pipe that is going to be attached on the air output to have the exhaust go outside rather than in my room. And finally, just before completing, here is the audio test with everything set up. So, I wouldn't want to sleep with that around, that's absolutely certain, but it's a good starting point and I can use it as a reference for the next update. Thanks a lot for watching this video, this is the state of the current progress. In the next video, I'm going to be looking into the software more closely. I want to start stress testing the machines, see if I can't install a few clusters or whatnot. I want the machines in use, I want them to do stuff and see if I can get the ball rolling on that. That in turn is going to stress test the heat management system, at which point I'm probably going to want to either keep it as is or upgrade it, we shall see. But yeah, that's the idea. Thanks a lot again for watching and see you soon.